Um, I hope I'm A&M. Um, great challenge. Great challenge. Um, play extremely hard. They are um, beyond deep. Uh, play 13 guys. Um, they, I got to a point watching film, they all looked alike. Uh, got two very, 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 very quick, uh, tiny guards who can really get it going. Uh, they will throw uh, full court pressure at us, run and jump uh, for 40 minutes. Uh, and, and, I, and I say that we're not a small team either. I mean, we're seven foot, you know, 295 um, center. Um, but um, it is a 40 minutes of relentless uh, pressure. They'll mix it up. Uh, they, they have played a little bit of zone, but um, um, they're one of the top teams in the country enforcing turnovers. Uh, just shy of 18 a game, I think. Uh, right at it, uh, which is a lot. So uh, we'll have to be extremely ball tough. Uh, when you're going to have to make basketball plays. Uh, they're going to be in hard denial, very similar to the way we were the first couple of years, uh, trying to take everything away. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're just, uh, you, you have to expect the unexpected with them on the defensive side. And, uh, so we've got to keep great spacing, we've got to play with great pace, we've got to play with great ball toughness, um, and uh, be uh, uh, you know, excited to see that we've got to, we've got to do a good job with our, with our perimeter guys because they can really get going shooting it. So uh, great challenge for our guys. Coach, was this a good point in the season to have the week break between games? And how did you approach it? I'd love to have a week, week, week off between just about every game. Uh, yeah, it, it's a little more difficult, Doug, because of finals. Um, now, once we get out of finals, we can, we can, I think we had two guys this afternoon with finals. Um, but, um, uh, so you're, 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 we took Wednesday off, we did nothing. Uh, everybody on our team had a massive day of finals, Tuesday and Wednesday. We didn't practice Tuesday night till Tuesday night. Uh, a little shorter, abrupt uh, workout, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it was uh, it was a good week of practice. Um, you know, it's also a mentally challenging week of practice from the from the academic side. Um, so, um, you know, once we get through uh, we get through this finals thing, then we can we can uh, really hone in. The points you raised post game on Saturday. How do you think your team is responding? We'll find out tomorrow. We'll find out tomorrow. It's been good. I mean, you know, I, um, you know, I've said it. Um, nothing's bigger than our culture, and 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 Coleman's got to be a keeper of our culture and and and, and, he, and a leader and and the accountability is um, uh, what I was what I was frustrated with. It, but if you go watch anything from our secret scrimmage to the game at Texas effort-wise and watch the other night, you'll see why I was upset. And uh, uh, I can get beat. I can, I don't like it, but not that way. Not not even try. And uh, that started the first possession of the game. So, um, you know, we've, we've had conversations about those things and uh, they're unacceptable. Uh, it wasn't easy. Uh, emotionally, I get it, but um, we got to be bigger than that, and we got to accept any challenge, and we didn't meet that challenge very well. Coleman mentioned that he met with some members of the staff, tried to find the right approach as a leader. What approach do you want him to take? That's, it's not about what I want, it's about what he's capable of. And, and I mean, he's got to do that within his personality. He's, he, you can't go be, you know, Iowa. Iowa's in your face, and, and you know, he would fight you. You know that, and that's not him. Um, you know where Trent was more just demanding and effort and led by example, and that's Coleman. Uh, and, and Coleman will will say stuff, and 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 you know he's got to just be a voice to understand what our expectation is and what our level of 
uh, and what's established our culture. And, and if he does that, then we'll be fine. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, I expect that same thing from, from, from Terrence. And, and uh, Terrence has got a great voice in our locker room. And, you know, you can't have those two guys not be leaders, not be, they're the experienced guys. You know, I didn't get on the freshmen, I got on the veterans. And I was disappointed in them. So, um, you, know, ex, you know, I guess excuse me for wanting Terrence Shannon to play with the effort. They got at 10 rebounds in one half against UCLA. It goes eight for nine. That's my expectation. Anything else, not going not gonna to be that. Coleman's been in our program for three years. He's been a part of a lot of, a lot of things he should know. So expect, you know, shame on me for expecting him to be that guy. Gosh, you guys let me off easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Coleman, you know, mentioned that you know, in the last couple of years, there have been early season games, maybe like Penn State, where you got it knocked around and maybe that wasn't there, and you had similar reactions. Just what did maybe those previous teams do to respond that this team needs to as well? Yeah, I, you know what? Non-conference basketball is hard. Non-conference games are really hard. And, and nobody pays attention to it, but it, it, you're cramped. The games, the games are just, they just come at you, one right after another. And then, you know, in our case, we sandwich maybe the biggest non-conference event of the year in between two league games, and then win it in overtime against the second-ranked team in the country in the garden. And now you got to turn around, and, and, and that's not an excuse. But we've had those lapses, and it happens because of practice. You don't get to practice. You don't get to continue to work on your base things and get and get better. You know, you start throwing in all the days off that you have to take off, and and the mental drain, and you know, all of a sudden you're a little tired, and now your fundamentals go, and now you don't you're not playing as hard, and those those things all um, lead into that. And um, you know, we we've, we've we've had them. Um, you're still trying to find yourself, you know, the Cincinnati game last year, you know, we played three or four games without Kofi and then Kofi comes back and we're trying to figure our team out and everybody's roles then become different and now, you know, this, you know, this year it's, it, we've always had those and it's, it's, it's a process. You're not just going to be a, a refined, fine-tuned machine every single day as much as we, we strive for that. But, uh, you know, you address, that's why we play the games we play. You address them and now you've got a, it's unfortunate it happened in a late game, but you can't get it back. So we got to grow and, and, and learn to fight in a, another day. When rosters have such overturn, I mean, just across college basketball and you're obviously no different here, how important is it to have those kind of torchbearers of that culture like Coleman, Luke, RJ, and how difficult is it to amplify that? in these early parts of the season to some of those newcomers. Yeah, that's what petrifies me for the future. It's what scares me to death for the future. I mean, we've, I've built, everything I've ever done has been based on, on being able to, to have those guys. And, and that's why it's, it's so hard to rebuild. If you ever have to do it, you have to establish what your, what your, what your culture is, what, what your, what your convictions are. And, Having players back who, who who know all those things help the new guys grow. And uh, you know, I just say if a coach has to lead, they're never going to be very good. And I, that's in any sport. And and so that's the, one of the worst things about the portal that that I, you know I, I, you struggle with is you've got to find dominant personalities earlier and and find those guys in the portal or wherever you find them. It's not it's talents. Neither here nor there. If, they, if if you can't have your base culture, so it, it's hard. Um, my expectation level for for veterans. I know how good people we have. I know how good guys we have, and and that's why I'm leaning on those on, on Terrence, who's a new guy, and Coleman. And you know, we need more from RJ. We need more from uh, you know Luke. Uh, those guys. Those guys have been through that. They were part of the championship. 
talk about building up on fundamentals. Coleman said you were adding some new wrinkles offensively. What kind of adjustments or changes did you have to make on that end this week? I'll tell you tomorrow. After, after the game or whatever. But, yeah. We're, 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 we're we got to play faster. we got to get back to our speed. Our, our speed was electric early. And now we're, we're not playing that. We're trying to clean up transition uh, a lot. Obviously, it'll matter you know, tomorrow, and you'll kind of see the effort if they have it tomorrow or not. But have you noticed a change of pace with your team this past week? Oh, yeah. We've, 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 had, a, we've had a positive week, and we've ensured that that's happened. We've, we've, uh, um, we, we've, we've had a, a, a week that I enjoy as a coach. We've had enough time to, to emphasize certain things and demand the effort that it takes to win. And, and we've set the standard. You know, we've, we've done that against Syracuse. We've done that against UCLA. Uh, Virginia is might be the best, one of the two best teams in the country. We might have played both of them. I, and did it for a long time. And the, the standard has been set. It's just now replicating that and making that, as we say in our program, an everyday guy. And you can't be an everyday guy if you don't show up and do it every day. And then you're a fraud. I know you mentioned Luke. Uh, how is he progressing, and when was his most recent follow-up? And do you have any timeline there? No, he hasn't had one. He's had a couple. He's had one. Um, he's he's uh, he's doing great. You know, now he's he's back in that in our new uh, in our new toy that underwater um, treadmill deal. Um, he's in there, and he's 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 doing light running in there. Uh, that reduces your body weight. Um, he's been on an elliptical. Uh, he's working extremely hard with Fletch. Uh, and to be very honest with you, I don't know when his follow-up is. It's a, it's, a, it's a couple weeks, I think. I think it's after the after Christmas, so we'll uh, first of the year. Uh, so we'll we'll get him to that point. And, but he's been relentless in his in his in his efforts. You made a pretty poignant comment after Penn State that if I have to do this, we're in trouble. Are you seeing signs at least this week that? There are guys who wear jerseys that are going to take it from you. We'll see. We'll see. I I I I'd love to be able to say yeah. I mean, right today, I understand. I understand. this week, yeah. Okay. This week, yeah. But when it's when it's in the locker room and I'm not here, and it's and it's uh, in the in the apartments and it's around and it's when when I'm not around, you know, those those are the um, those are the accountability things that that um, uh, great leaders do. And, and they, make, they make it a point to make it important to everybody. And it's not just, just go, go through life ho-hum. Oh, I'm worried about me and I'm worried about, it's, it's the little things that, you know, okay, man, God, we're getting ready to go to here. Here's, some, here's an intricate thing about this place or here's something about the way we travel. Or, it doesn't have to be, but man, hey, when we run this play, at this time, this is what we're looking for. You know, and it's, it's just guys thinking about others all the time. And that was what, that's what really good leaders do. It's not about them, it's about, it's about helping others as well. I know you had a quote in the statement, but how did the Tennessee home and home come about? And just your, what's your, I guess, stance on home and homes versus some of those neutral site uh, games like that? Yeah, I've known Rick for a long time. Um, Rick's Rick's become a guy that I have tremendous appreciation for. I think he was, he was don't quote me exactly. Sixteen of seventeen NCAA tournaments at Texas. Um, obviously, the job he did uh, prior to getting there got him that job. So he was very successful. Um, he's a guy I've had a lot of respect for. When I was at SFA, we played. Um, he always played us, um, and uh, we talk on the road. He's, he's a guy that I, I, have a, I have a lot of respect for. Um, and then it's really simple. I, not that I'm not a fan of neutral site, but I love home and homes. And our students and our fans deserve to see us play the very best in our buildings. And uh, with the obvious choice that, the, that, that we don't have the challenge anymore, uh, it gives us flexibility, um, a 
especially for when the late games may happen, but it also gives us flexibility in scheduling non-league games. It gives us the possibility now to maybe play a three-team MTE, uh, which I'm dead against with the ACC Challenge and two Big Ten games. It takes too much time. Um, but uh, so it, it, that does open up some things. Um, I don't think we're done. Um, you guys all know I'm going to play a really hard schedule. I don't want to play. I don't want to play a whole lot of games. That I, I like. I like. I like finding out who we are, and we'll definitely find out against uh, against Tennessee. Great venues. We've got a great facility. Rick's got that thing. Um, I'm at a high level, and it should be a game that uh, um, is is exciting for for their fans as well as ours. And they'll put twenty three thousand in their building, and we'll put sixteen in ours, and it'll be uh, great for college basketball. Coach, you seem like for long stretches the ball really didn't find Terrence Shannon in that game. It, is that up to him to find those opportunities, or, or is there Both. something you can do to dial up some of those Both. plays? Both. We got to do a better job. I got to do a better. I got to get Terrence Cole, and um, but he's got to he's got to he's he's got to put himself in those positions. Terrence got a lot early because of his speed and his running, and and in transition. And uh, uh, we've got to get get him back to that. He got a lot early because he was rebounding the basketball at a very high level, and he was pushing in transition. We haven't done that, uh, but uh, in the half court we had help. You said after a few games this year that you just didn't didn't get into the press. What has maybe stymied the team in, in those situations? Effort. Effort. Want to. We scrimmage Kansas. We got into that thing every single time. We were excited about it. Effort. And it's the reality is we're, we have an offensive rebound and we're two rips in the last three games. And when you go to the glass, that's been another point of emphasis this week. When you go to the glass, you're right there. Um, you know, can't have Coleman backpedaling from the top of the key to half court when he's deploying the press. And so it, it, it's, it's commitment. We've demanded it. We've, it's become one of our conviction points, and we, we've got to do a better job. To this point, has Terrence handled your comments and viral fart noise? Um, directed at his leadership that, that the, way, the way that you want it? Sure. Sure, you great kid. He, you guys all see that, and everybody sees that. And, and, uh, um, he's, he's mature. He's, you, you guys see the, the other conversations I have with him, and, 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 and he knows my expectation is for him to be the best. You know, I, I also told, said he was one of the best players in the country. And he was probably the best player in the country the night we played UCLA. And again, I, he, he knows that that's my expectation. Anything else, I'm going to keep pushing him to be that. And, and that's, that's my job as a coach. That's the title of coach. Make guys uncomfortable so they can be the very best they can be. And that's all I want for Terrence, and he knows that. He actually got a lot of you okay with where Ty is right now from a confidence or, or a mental standpoint? Or is this normal, um, the first two months of a freshman year yeah. in your mind? Yeah, very. And he's going to be really, really good. And he's had a great week of practice. Okay. Um, you know, I think there's always the struggles of finding out what you can and can't do. And then there's always the factors that come in once games start, how you get scouted and how you get and how people play you. And, um, you, you, he's a perfectionist, and it's an imperfect game, and you can't dwell on that stuff. Uh, he's worried about certain issues, and, and, but we got to get him to just cut loose, just play. Let his instincts take over and his passing and his feel and his cutting and, and, and just go, <laughs> go play. I mean, here's a kid that I think with 13 straight days of leading us in rebound. We need, we need time, and we need his, we need his, his, his athleticism, his length, his toughness. Yep.